There's a difference between fact and truth. It might be a fact that you have symptoms, but the truth is by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. So instead of saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, you would decree by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Who do you think I am? Do you think I'm restricted as to what I can give? He says, do you not understand that even if it was billions, I could, I could give you the billions, I am not limited. Everything that he decreed happened because he was working a miracle through the power of the decree. And I just want to encourage you to do the same. And Jesus um, oftentimes used this principle in his own ministry. For example, in Luke 5.13, a leper came to him. And um, I mean, the leper was like full of devastating leprosy. But Jesus decreed, be cleansed. I call you cleansed. And immediately... The leper was cleansed. Jesus decreed it. He called him clean. Okay, the decree of Jesus' word brought forth cleansing, healing, and restoration that was not existent prior to that. So we're going to call those things that are not as though they are. But we're not going to call them as though they were not. Okay, for, for example, if you're fighting sickness in your body, you would not decree, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. <laughs> There's a difference between fact and truth. It might be a fact that you have symptoms, but the truth is, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. So instead of saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, you would decree, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Right? You decree into being the things that God says. You don't go into the negative. It would be the same as if you went to a bank. Let's say you, you um, had a large debt that you owed to the bank. You wouldn't go to your banker and say, I have no debt. I don't owe you anything. You wouldn't say that. But in, in the spirit, in your prayer time, you can say, all my needs are met according to God's riches and glory. He's dissolving the debt. He's forgiving my debt. It's moving. The mountain's moving. You can make all kinds of decrees that the spirit quickens to you, calling those things that are not as though they are. But you don't go say, I have not this. I don't have this. Because there's a fact. You do have a debt. That's a fact. But the truth is, is that God meets all your needs according to his riches and glory. I had a situation a number of years ago that just about stopped me from believing in the supernatural because we know that one of the uh, things that we can access in heaven, one of the riches is healing. Yes. I mean, it's very clear in the scripture. It's for, it's for believers today. And we were praying for a little boy who was fighting leukemia. We'd done a lot of fasting and prayer. His parents were in faith. A little boy was in faith, just a precious little boy. And we were just standing, believing. Um, as far as we could tell, we didn't have any unbelief or anything that was hindering in that way. And we were just standing there. And you know, right to the very last breath, that little boy was believing. And yet, he didn't manifest a healing in the earth. He passed yeah. without manifesting the healing. And we were really shaken over it. I'll just be honest. We were very shaken. We had all the questions. Well, what happened? Why? You know, we, we thought we were believing everything that you told us to, to believe in and everything that we were to do, we did. And what happened? And so it just shook us up. And I remember thinking at the time, I don't think I can pray for healing anymore mm -hmm. because I'm devastated and I failed and I don't know why. And I don't think I have the confidence now to pray anymore. And the Lord spoke to me at that time and he said, you cannot stop. He said, you don't have the answers, but my word is true. There, there is, there's truth in the word that you can stand on and not waver in and just continue and put your disappointment on the altar as a yeah. sacrifice of worship. And so I began to just worship him and say, God, this disappointment is probably the most costly gift I've ever given you, but I give it to you. And I just feel like there's someone watching is that you're in this place. You're thinking, I don't know if I can believe for the supernatural. When it talks about accessing riches in heaven, I don't know if I can even go there because I've had failed attempts and I don't know if I can trust myself. I don't even know if I feel I can trust God. But the Lord's saying, lay those disappointments on the altar and give it to him as an offering of worship and just continue to go on. Yes. Believe his word. His word is true. You're not to be in a corner. You don't hide in a corner and say, oh, the devil's beating me up. I've got so much warfare. Oh, no. Oh, no. And retreat. No, because we're meant to move forward. So keep moving forward. 
Don't stop. When you're under attack, do not stop. Keep moving forward. I've had to remind myself that in this last season. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Move forward with Jesus. Move forward in his word. But do not get backed into a corner. I remember when I was a, a fairly new Christian, and then I was getting some spiritual attack, and, and um, the Lord... You know, I was crying out to the Lord, oh, Lord, help me, help me. Oh, this is happening. The enemy's attacking again. And the Lord said, you're in a corner. He showed me a vision of me in a corner. And I was trying to bat the enemy, trying to protect my corner sort of thing. He said, why are you in a corner? Why are you on the defensive? I've called you to be on the offense, not on the defense. And all of a sudden, the light went on on the inside. I thought, yeah, what am I doing? I don't need to be in a defensive posture here. I'm on the offense, and I'm going to get you, and you'll be sorry you ever tried. And I rose up that day and went for and all of a sudden, layers of warfare dissipated. The only reason that they had stayed with me in that season was because I let it. I just let the devil push me into a corner. If you're in a corner, it's because, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm saying this with love and kindness because I've been there myself. But it's because you've been in a, been letting him. But it says, this is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. Wow, this is absolute truth. It is in the scripture. It's a scripture promise for us. So if you know that you're praying according to God's will, that's it. First determine that. Then if you pray according to his will, you know that you have it and that you can have that confidence. And then another favorite uh, prayer scripture that I have is out of Mark 11. It's a very, very popular uh, scripture, but I want to deliver it to you because I want to kind of drive this thing home and, and get you activating it. But it says, Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you receive them and they shall be given to you. So it's when you pray, you believe that you've received it. And this is what the Lord was showing us in prayer that day. It was like you take from the from the eternal dimension, the eternal promise, and you pull it into the natural so that there's no time or distance. I want you to start expecting. That's what the Lord told us in the prayer group. He said, when you pray, don't just think of the concept of prayer, but think of the substance of what you're asking for. So if you have expectation for it to start coming immediately to close in the gap of the time that you ask to the time of fulfillment, close in the gap. If you start expecting it, you're going to get quicker and quicker and quicker responses to prayer. Don't start like being, you know, like you've been anxious over it. So you've got to kind of get rid of that anxiety and just start, okay, he's in the kingdom. I believe he's in the kingdom. I believe he's walking with God and start seeing the answer to your prayer through the eye of faith and living in the reality of that. Why? Because Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is a substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen. <laughs>to perceive things in the spirit right away I will bind him in Jesus name I bind you you don't have any place in this time with God you cannot tempt me with anything you can't put wrong images in my mind I will only see what God wants me to see now what I've done by taking care of those two options and you can do this in prayer before you see, hear, touch, smell, you know, any of the five senses you can handle in the same way is that you are refusing to accept things from your natural man and you're refusing things from the enemy. Then the next thing you do is you ask the Lord to fill you with his spirit. I only want to see what you show me, Holy Spirit. And so I submit myself completely to you. And when you go through that simple little exercise, and it can work with all the different senses, when you go through that simple exercise, you are preparing yourself to see in the Spirit. Now, the most common way that believers see, the most common way, is through faint little impressions in the imagination, or we can call it the mind's eye. And sometimes these pictures are so faint 
that you actually have to chase after them to pull them back or to focus on them because they just come and go. They are just fleeting. They fleet through the mind. And so we were doing a conference and Bob Jones, who's a prophet who has gone on to be with the Lord now, he was one of the speakers at the conferences. And I knew from his reputation, I knew that he had had numerous visits into heaven. And I was picking him up from the airport as one of the speakers and taking him to his hotel. And so on the way I said, you know, I had a heavenly encounter back in 1994. This was six years later. And I said, I'd love to have another one. And I hear that, that you have had numerous heavenly encounters. He said, yep, I have them every day. I said, what? You have them every day? Are you kidding? I would love to have a heavenly encounter every day. And I said, would you pray for me? Because I'd like to have, I'd like to have a heavenly encounter. And he said, yep, I'll pray for you. Now, he didn't pray for me that night. He said, I'll, I'll pray for you later. And so you can imagine, I was waiting and waiting and waiting for this heavenly encounter and, you know, uh, waiting for him to pray and minister to me. And I thought he was just going to do the Midas touch and that would be it. I'd start having heavenly encounters. But it wasn't that way. I did have an encounter uh, after he prayed for me, but it was a faith encounter. And he said, Patricia, you're looking for another sovereign encounter, but... The Lord says you're already seated in heavenly places in Christ. The Lord says you're already in the heavenly places, that your citizenship is already in heaven. You're already there. All you need is for your faith to connect. Well, that didn't make any sense to me at all because I only had one experience and that experience was a sovereign experience. And so I was a little bit confused and didn't quite get it. But it was later, about six months later, I was in my prayer time with the Lord. And that's when he started visiting me for a 30-day visitation with the Holy Spirit teaching me about the heavenly dimension of the Spirit of God. Okay, well, one of the things that I suggested him do is to make decrees. Now, it says in Job that um, if we decree a thing, it will be established. Now, a decree is an official word given by someone in authority. There's no greater authority than Yeshua. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him according to Matthew 28, 18. And so we can take his word. It says in the scripture that his words are spirit and they are life. So when we decree that word, it says in Esther 8, 8, when you make a decree in the name of a king, it shall not be revoked. So I said, why don't in your prayer time start decreeing holiness over your workplace? Start decreeing um, God's righteousness. Start to De decreeing purity. And so he did that. That was one of the keys that he used. Another key is praise. Not just praise God, not for the filth that's in the workplace, but for what God's going to do in the workplace. Start praising Jesus for, for coming in as the King of Kings and the Lord of glory and creating an atmosphere of the glory of God. And so he used a number of different keys. And one of the greatest keys, Sid, is the key of love, of course. Well, it's about creating your world. And it's the title of my book called Create Your World. And when God started downloading this revelation to me, I was so flipped out, excited about it. And it comes out of Genesis 1. And so if you want to start by looking there, you can look at Genesis 1.1 because it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God there is Elohim, which means divine ruler or divine creator. And it says the earth was formless and void, which meant it had no structure. It was in a state of chaos. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. You know, maybe in your life right now, you're thinking, wow, I've got some places in my own life that are you know, without form, they're void, they're without substance, they're chaotic, they're confused, they're, they're, there's no shape to it, I don't know where I'm going, it's just kind of blah, even though I know the Lord is with me, He's hovering over my life, but there's so much like, blah, that's not even in any kind of form yet. Or maybe you've got areas of your life that have darkness or shadows on them, and there's no light in them at all. Well, what God did is He brought order into chaos, form into shapelessness, and he brought light into darkness. And you know what? You can too, because you have the power to create. In Genesis uh, 1, 27, it says, God, Elohim, created man 
in his own image. In one of the versions it says, image and likeness. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them and then he blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So he gave them the power to rule in the earth. But it says that he made us in his image, in the image of Elohim, divine ruler and the one who creates. You have the power to create because you've been made in the image of God. Uh, Psalm 103, verse 20, if you could turn in your Bibles there. I'm going to show you something because this is how you actually can activate, uh, you can activate the angels. In Psalm 103, verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels. Now, I do want to highlight something here. This is David writing this psalm. He is actually, David himself is commanding the angels to worship God. Bless the Lord, you his angels. He's commanding them to bless the Lord. So there's a little key there that as believers, as covenant children of God, we can command angels. So it says, bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. So they don't obey a mere human being's word. They obey God's word. And the reason why we can release them or the way that we can dispatch them is by proclaiming the word of God because they obey the voice of the word of God. Many of you know the testimony of how when our ministry started in television ministry, it was a huge step of faith and God had told us to do it. I was a bit nervous about it at first, but we had the word of the Lord on it. And so we stepped out by faith into it and we got so hit by warfare. The warfare that we have faced in media over the years has been horrific, especially in the beginning days. And it was just like all of the provision dried up and, and I, was, I was in a bit of a panic because our our budget in order to do television ministry our budget doubled more than doubled actually overnight and back then I mean it's not as much as we need to believe for now but it was significant right and so I was really worried one night because we had bills to pay um, there's two days I believe before the end of the month when those bills had to be paid and there was just no money in the bank and I was I was tossing and turning in the night and I said to my husband I said it's I don't know what to do I mean we you know we don't have the money in the bank right now I don't know what to do and he said just go to sleep and I said go to sleep I said how can you sleep at a time like this you know and he says well all you're worrying isn't going to change it you might as well just go to sleep and I thought that was being insensitive. And so he went to sleep and I, I stayed up and worried. And um, I woke him up a few times and he just had the same word of wisdom, go to sleep. And finally, it was around five o'clock in the morning. I got up out of bed and I went and into our hot tub and I was crying out to the Lord. I said, oh God, oh God, oh God, you know, we've got this television ministry and I need $80,000 right now. I need $80,000. I don't know what to do. And even if I get $80,000 in the next couple of weeks, then I have to have it again for next month, you know, and I'm, I'm bawling and squalling like an idiot. And um, I'm just listening to myself whine. When all of a sudden God speaks to my heart and he said, yeah, he says $80,000. He said, my uh, daughter, Joyce Meyer, she, she needs millions every single month. She expects me to give her millions every single month. And my son, Benny Hinn, and my son, Kenneth Copeland, he goes on and on. They all need millions every month. I wasn't anticipating that you were gonna need 80 grand. And all of a sudden I started laughing you know, he was just, he was just getting to me in such a fun way because I could feel him laughing like, who do you think I am? Do you think I'm restricted as to what I can give? He says, do you not understand that even if it was billions, I could, I could give you the billions. I am not limited in what I can give you. He said, look at the birds of the air. They need food every single day. Every single day, I have to feed all the birds in all the earth every day. Today, I want to share an amazing story that Alenia text from Patricia King and in seven months of Babylon, amazing book. And we'll see ministers there, we'll see sharing TV, 
preach from thousand people, many books sold out. You think that's very easy to her? That's very easy to her make a program on TV? Hey, bro, it's not easy to anyone. It's not easy to anyone. You can live in Pakistan. You can live in South America. You can live in India. Say, ah, America is more easy to do ministry because they have more money. Hey, oh, my family is don't give it training to me, didn't send me to Bible school, stop in doing, stop in your excuse, stop in your excuse, see you in the next episode.